end of my wandering never changes what you see i've tried to win this war i confess my hands are weary i need your rest mighty warrior king of the fight no matter what i face you're by tomorrow brings there's not a day ahead you have not seen so in all things my life and breath i want what you want lord and nothing less when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to Welcome to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church and to New Heights Worship. We are so glad that you're here this morning on this also 4th of July holiday weekend. I think we can look around and see that maybe there are a few people who might be elsewhere, but we're glad that we're here in worship. And so I want to lift up that we're starting a new sermon series today uh, to infinity and beyond, embracing God's unlimited power. Um, this is based on our To Mars and Beyond Vacation Bible School, which will take place later this month. This is something we do every year. We base the whole month of July's sermons on whatever our kids are doing. So you're going to see some things added over the course of the next few weeks that um, um, resemble space and um, have a theme about space. So we'll enjoy looking at that as those are set up. Um, also... If you would take just a few moments to look at your worship bulletin, you'll notice a lot of opportunities um, for, especially for children and youth coming up, um, as well as opportunities in, in the fall. Um, New Heights get-togethers, I've lifted those up a few Sundays. We're asking people to complete the Connect card and to sign up for uh, a, a way to have a small group in their geographic area close to their neighborhood. So I hope you'll think about doing that. We'll um, uh, get lists together by the end of August for everyone. 
We are needing chefs, home-style chefs, for our macaroni and cheese food festival at War Memorial, which is going to um, uh, benefit five homeless nonprofits. Um, so, and, and this month, and specifically as a mission, um, every July we focus on Give a Kid a Chance. That's the name of it, Give a Kid a Chance. And it is um, a fundraiser that we do for our uh, Wakefield Elementary uh, School partners. They are our partners and we provide supplies, uniforms, um, and it really helps those kids um, who we also tutor during the year. So any amount, I think we kind of say $35 supports a kid. So um, if you have an opportunity to give to that, we would greatly appreciate it all through this month. And we're still collecting Guatemala medical mission items as well, and you'll see those listed. That, those two teams leave later this month as well. If you would take your uh, Connect card, tear that off, and later in the service when our offering baskets come around, if you would place that in the offering basket, allow us an opportunity, especially if you're visiting today, to reach out to you in a more personal way. We are so glad that you are here. Would you stand now as we continue our worship with a song? Fire! 
please be seated. Time I'd like to invite our children forward for a time to learn together. There's very few, so y'all can't be shy. Or I'll be by myself. Yeah, you're a trooper. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good morning. How are you? All right. So this is just between me and you, so you got to answer, all right? All right. Have you ever been to a zoo? Did you get to see the lions in the den at the zoo? What? You can't remember? Do you think if you had seen the lions, the zookeepers would let you in and go pet them? No. Why not? Because they would eat you? Yeah, they're, they're pretty dangerous, and that's why they wouldn't let you in. And so today, I want to tell you about a man in the Bible named Daniel. And one time, Daniel had to spend a whole night in the den with the lions. Daniel had a really good job in the kingdom of a man named Darius because he was a hard worker. And the other men in the kingdom were jealous, and they wanted to find a way to get him in trouble. But he was such a good man that they could only use his religious beliefs against him. So they tricked the king into making a law that no one could ask God or man for anything. They could only ask the king. But Daniel continued to pray to God and was punished by being thrown into the lion's den. Even in the den with the lions, Daniel continued to pray, and God kept the lions from hurting him, even one bit. In the morning, the king realized what he, the mistake that he had made, and he went to free Daniel, and he was very happy that Daniel was okay. And from this story, we can learn that just like Daniel, we can stand up for what we believe in and trust in God even when the world attacks those beliefs. And on this Independence Day weekend, we're thankful that we have the freedom to pray to our God like Daniel and be faithful to Jesus at all costs. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for this time that we have where we can come together and learn more about you. We thank you that in this country we have the freedom to pray to you and to stand up for what we believe in. And we remember those who still do not have that freedom and we ask that you would be with them and be with the leaders so that one day we may all be free to pray to the God that we see. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. God of grace, you rule all the peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all women and men to whom you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership in the nations of the world. Give to them the vision of truth and justice, that by their counsel all nations and peoples may work together. Give to the people of our country zeal for justice and strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation and purify our hearts to see and love the truth. Within our community, our Christian sympathy is extended to Jane Schwartz and family and the death of her sister, Jewel Ann George. To Lynn Monk and family in the death of her brother, Jim McCleary. To Molly Vandiver and family in the death of her nephew, Joey Jameson and to the family and friends of Luna Craver Bracey in her recent death. We pray for those hospitalized recently, Francis Kelton, Paula Woolsley, Linda Orton, Carol Smelly, Lee Thompson, and Randy Wyatt. And we rejoice in the baptism of Benjamin James Kahn, child of Anne and Blake Kahn. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servants. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your sanctuary. Give ear, O God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. During the singing of this next song, it's called uh, Rescue, and it's by uh, 
Lauren Daigle. And we sing a lot of her music uh, here. And you know, during, while this song plays, there are going to be pictures that appear on the screen. And that's a, a slideshow of the PHUMC emergency response team that has been helping repair uh, houses that have been damaged by the flood out in Mayflower. And so while this song plays and you see those images, we ask that you keep those people in your thoughts and prayers. Um, you can send money uh, for emergency flood relief, and that information is in our bulletin uh, there. So let us pray. God who is always with us, we ask that you be with the people who have experienced the walls coming down in Mayflower by the floods. And we ask that you be with those people who are helping them repair their houses, that you give them strength, that they may carry out the work that you have called them to do. It's in your name we pray. Amen. no distance that cannot be covered over and over you're not defenseless I'll be your shelter I'll be your armor I hear you whisper underneath your I hear your wrestle 
please stand if you're able for a reading from Daniel 6, verses 16 through 23. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and hurled him into the pit of lions. The king said to Daniel, Your God, the one you serve so consistently, will rescue you. A single stone was brought and placed over the entrance to the pit. The king sealed it with his own ring and with those of his princes so that Daniel's situation couldn't be changed. The king then went home to his palace and fasted through the night. No pleasures were brought to him, and he couldn't sleep. At dawn, at the first sign of light, the king rose and rushed to the lion's pit. As he approached it, he called out to Daniel, worried, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God the one you serve so consistently, able to rescue you from the lions? Then Daniel answered the king, Long live the king. My God sent his messenger who shut the lion's mouth. They haven't touched me because I was judged innocent before my God. I haven't done anything wrong to you either, your majesty. The king was thrilled. He commanded that Daniel be brought up out of the pit, and Daniel was lifted out. Not a scratch was found on him because he trusted in his God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We have had a few problems with our lights this morning. We're not going crazy upstairs. Just wanted you to know if we do have further problems so you'll be aware. Please note that on the back of your worship bulletin, there's a place for you to put sermon notes. So um, we invite you to do that this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, either through me or in spite of me, speak the good news that we may all hear it, embrace it, and above all, live it. In the name of Christ, the risen one, amen.
to Q. This is 79 GSL here. Come back. The great American astronomer, cosmologist, astrophysicist, astrobiologist, author, and science communicator, Carl Sagan, was best known for his scientific contribution researching extraterrestrial life. In 1979, his television series, Cosmos, seen by at least 500 million people across 60 different countries, premiered on public television. And it popularized understanding of space and the universe. Sagan also co-wrote the book Contact, which later became the movie of the same name. The film is about a woman's science, a woman scientist's search for extraterrestrial life that began when she was a child fascinated with space and the potential of other forms of life. If you didn't see that movie when it came out in 1997, the film clip that we just saw was the opening scene. And the little girl at the end of that scene, Ellie Arroway, becomes a curious grown-up scientist. Arroway does not believe in God. Her interest is in the way the cosmos works and can reveal its miraculous rules to us through science. Today, as you've already heard, we begin a new sermon series, To Infinity and Beyond, based on this year's Vacation Bible School theme. Each week, we will explore stories of regular, ordinary people who experienced God's extraordinary power at work within them. Perhaps one of the most famous scriptural stories we learn as children is the story of the great Jewish hero, Daniel. We recall how Daniel, living in exile in Babylon, in a foreign country, was given a place of prominence in the court of King Nebuchadnezzar. Unfortunately, the king set up a great golden image to be worshipped by everyone. Daniel's good Jewish friends, you may, may remember them too, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow to the king's idol. When the royal officials point out the disobedience of the three young men, King Nebuchadnezzar, who is a silly and immature tyrant, tells the young Jews they will be thrown into the fiery furnace for their worship and their prayers. However, with trust in their God, the three reply to the king that they will never serve the king's God or worship any golden statues that he has set up. The king, as most narcissistic leaders tend to do when disobeyed, is enraged when the three refuse. And he demands the furnace be lit to seven times its normal temperature. That's what rage gets you. Yet no earthly king can triumph over the God of Israel. Most of us should have learned that truth earlier in the book of Exodus. Go back at the beginning of the Bible, the second chapter, when we read the story of how the Egyptian Pharaoh was defeated gloriously defeated by God's power at work within a group of disobedient women. Yeah, there were women involved as well as Moses to create the liberation, the incredible freedom of the Hebrews from slavery. The Daniel story continued this understanding of our mighty God. They are tales of court conflict that show not just the wisdom of Daniel, but the power of Israel's God to deliver God's people in the worst of circumstances. So we should not be surprised that at the get-go, 
that political manipulation will attempt to undermine this faithful Jewish boy as he serves among wily and powerful hungry Gentiles in a foreign country. Yet Daniel, Daniel our hero, will outlast the next king as well, Belshazzar, and he will survive the plot against his life during the rule of Darius by other court officers who envy his position. They want the king to employ an enforcer, someone who will be tougher, someone who will have no problem elevating the majority over the minority. Once again, those out to remove Daniel report him to King Darius, and they remind the king of a law that prohibits prayer to anyone besides him. Sound familiar? Here we go again. And it is true. It is true. Daniel prays only to his God. He does not and will not ever follow the law to pray to an earthly king. He is faithful first to God of all the kingdoms, and there, my friends, is the rub. The king is constrained to allow the edict execution. So King Darius reluctantly sends Daniel into the lion's dens with hopes that Israel God, Israel's God will indeed rescue Daniel, for he cares about Daniel. The faithful Jew is sealed by a stone, interesting, at the entrance where the lions are kept, so he cannot get out. And ruler Darius retires to fast and mourn. At dawn, at first light, the king returns to inspect what has happened to Daniel. We expect him to be torn to shreds, only to find those lions are purring. And Daniel is still praising God. Daniel's thanks to God is not merely about the preservation of his own life, asking God to save his life, but that his God, the one to whom he prays and worships, is the one, the one who will restore Israel one day, the one who is and always will be more powerful than any earthly king, the one who will not allow his own children to be the subject of any secular political system because this God, this God holds the entire cosmos in his hands. Daniel is no naive person of faith, no blind faith. He will serve God where he is, but his service to God will always come before allegiance to the whims of any ruler. Rabbi Daniel Rutenberg says, these stories feel so resonant today because the Bible is profoundly concerned with both abuse of power and our responsibilities when we have power. This should be our concern as well. The Exodus of slaves from Egypt were a work of God in concert with humans. As Rabbi Rutenberg further reminds us, different tactics serve us in different contexts. Sometimes we are dealing with a Pharaoh who doesn't care what we think, and sometimes with a government that is at least workable. Sometimes we need to create change by working within the system and sometimes we need to do everything in our capacity, agitating from outside it. When I arrived here as a very young pastor in 1992, I met my new boss, Dick Nixon, but I also met the new bishop, 
emeritus of this church. Bishop Kenneth Hicks had just moved into his office as well. Having just greeted one another, he complimented me on the straw hat I was wearing. I would learn this man was lacking in pretension, quick to kindness, funny in ways that no one expects of a bishop, wise, always, ready to learn more, slow to anger, if indeed I ever really saw anger, unless it was in the service of injustice. For decades, first as a bishop in Arkansas and later as he served with us in this congregation, he would seek peace with justice. He would write a book about it. By the way, we have some complimentary copies upstairs at the Welcome Center. And Bishop Hicks would stand in and beyond the structures of government to bear witness to his beliefs in a loving, compassionate, and righteous God. He stood in opposition to the death penalty and silently bore witness each time an inmate was executed. He was a lover of the creation, and he was endlessly concerned about what we were doing to it. He was an advocate for children and their families all children. When creation science was proposed to be taught in Arkansas public schools in the 1980s, Bishop Hicks did not support it. I located a deposition online and he stated his primary reason. My contention is that the material in the scriptures represents data of faith faith statements, theological statements, the why, the meaning of creation, but does not represent an enlightened account of the how of creation and was not intended to. Those who trust in God, those who search for righteousness, believe that all persons are made in the image of God and that should be, that should be the guiding principle of our human actions with all creatures of God from plant, animal, space, and beyond. God's power is at work in the story of Daniel to reveal that God's justice and righteousness will not be impeded by kings, and frankly, my friends, by presidents or any who deem themselves powerful or above righteousness. Dr. Ellie Arroway, the scientist in the film Contact, experiences during the course of that film something far greater than she ever could have imagined during her journey through a series of wormholes, but she can't prove it. The only tool available to her, it appears, is faith. In a televised hearing in front of hostile legislators who don't believe her, she attempts as best she can to articulate what a gift faith really is. There's no direct evidence, no. Tell me something, Doctor. Why do you think these aliens would go to all this trouble, bring you tens of thousands of light years, and then just send you home without a single shred of proof? They said that's how it's been done for billions of years. That's very neat, Doctor. You have no proof, because they didn't want you to have any. A phenomenon known in psychiatric circles, I believe, is a self-reinforcing delusion. Is that what you think, that I was delusional? Well, I do think you may have suffered some kind of an episode. Yeah, I do. You're implying that this was all some kind of a hoax, that, that he engineered this? Dr. Erway, you come to us with no evidence, no record, no artifacts, only a story that, to put it mildly, strains credibility. Over half a trillion dollars were spent. Dozens of lives were lost. 
Are you really going to sit there and tell us we should just take this all on faith? Please answer the question, Doctor. Is it possible that it didn't happen? Yes. As a scientist, I must concede that. I must volunteer that. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. You admit that you have absolutely no physical evidence to back up your story. Yes. You admit that you very well may have hallucinated this whole thing. Yes. You admit that if you were in our position, you would respond with exactly the same degree of incredulity and skepticism. Then why don't you simply withdraw your testimony and concede that this journey to the center of the galaxy, in fact, never took place? Because I can't. I had an experience. I can't prove it. I can't even explain it. But everything that I know as a human being, everything that I am, tells me that it was real. I was given something wonderful, something that changed me forever. A vision of the universe that tells us undeniably how tiny and insignificant and how rare and precious we all are. A vision that tells us that we belong to something that is greater than ourselves, that we are not, that none of us are alone. I wish I could share that. I wish that everyone, if even for one moment, could feel that awe and humility and the hope That continues to be my wish. There is no explanation. There's no scientific explanation for the act of faith. No one can predict what will happen when, when one trusts something one cannot see or one cannot explain. It is like waters that part so that a group of slaves can make their way to freedom. It is like a den of hungry lions whose mouths are reduced to purrs. It is like a tightly sealed tomb covered by a big rock that unbelievably has been moved and when one peers inside holds only empty burial cloths. It is like this bread and cup which is somehow like us. Broken and in pieces but that comes together as the body of Christ. That's the God who works in us and is also the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of this infinite universe. Thanks be to God. come forward to prepare for offering, I want to remind you of a couple things. Uh, first of all, that you can drop your Connect cards in the offering plates as they come by. Um, that the electronic funds transfer and text to give are options that are available. And these little, you can find one of these yellow cards in the back of the chairs. And if you choose to use that option, you can place this card in the basket as a act of worship. 
And then I also want to remind you that the church operating expenses need support, especially in the summer. So give as you feel called. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that we can always trust in you. You're an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us much. We give you this offering today, and with it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. So I declare your promises won't fail. My God is faithful. My God is faithful in you alone. I will place my trust.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. and pardon we cannot come before God unless we are first honest with ourselves about who we are about the mistakes we make and about how well or how poorly we care for others in this spirit let us silently offer our prayers to God hear the good news Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us offer one another signs of peace and love as we pass the peace of Jesus Christ. Give thanks for this meal. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn holy, holy. Blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, shared it with his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. In 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. church all honor and glory is yours almighty god now and forever together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Those who are serving would come forward. Jesus Christ, my Savior, 
salvation held up to drink Please stand as you're able to sing this. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Sing, Christ has died. Christ has died. Sing that one more time. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we go out into the world, just remind you that uh, we take the love of Christ with us. We are the ambassadors, so let's start with each other. Say hello to someone that maybe you don't know this morning as you leave and share that peace in Christ with them. Our next membership matters is August the 18th. It'll be coming up. Um, before we know it, we've got another month, but um, hope that if you are interested in joining Pulaski High School, let us know by attending that. Uh, particular um, class and uh, next week we'll be talking about embracing God's unlimited power with a stand against evil I hope you're enjoying and will enjoy these very classic um, Bible stories um, I think Esther is next week so brothers and sisters receive this blessing go forth and love God and your neighbor in all that you do bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ so that those who do not know that love will find in each and every one of us most treasured and generous friends, in the name of Christ, amen.